Welcome back to another edition of the Wizard Shop. Today, we're going to talk about some things that I call wizard tips. This isn't for the professional techs out there that know all the tricks of the trade and have all their, the, the ways that they work all figured out and everything. This is for the do-it-yourself mechanic. This is for the guy who's a hobbyist, the shade tree mechanics. I guess that's what you call them. So we're going to go over some few tips that I've had friends in the shop or I've had even apprentices, people working for me when I show them these tips. It just like blows up their mind. They're like, why didn't I think of that? So let's get started. So before we get started, the, the previous videos that you guys have seen have had some pretty bad sound quality, pretty bad video quality or whatnot. We're actually using a 4K camera. You're watching 4K right now. And I have let several people have recommended the, the Rode Wireless Go setup. That's what I'm trying out. Let's see how the results are. I'm hoping they're really good. I want to do really good for you guys. So the first tip and I've ran into this problem. I have an apprentice, someone I've hired, or even helping a buddy out. We're, we're pulling a transmission, and there's some bolts on the bell housing they can't get to. And they've got some bunch of weird universal joints and weird things, and they're in there and they're, ah, and they're knocking their hands, and I just can't get to this bolt. I don't know what we're gonna do, and they're totally stumped. The trick of the trade here is don't box yourself in. Don't get stuck in this little area right here and say the problem is here and the solution is here. I just have to find it when the solution is not there. Let's take a few steps back. I'll show you the solution. Long 3 8 extensions. As many as you need. You can just keep going and keep going. I can reach out and touch Mrs. Wizard with it. Ow! The reality is, guys, don't box yourself in. From right here, I can get right onto a bolt that's giving me a bunch of trouble. As you can see, it's on the, on the bolt. And you put your ratchet or impact or whatever you want to use on the end. And now you're not fighting. You can just break the bolt loose. Break it loose. Then you can put a power ratchet or an impact and zip the bolt out onto the next one. You can go all the way around the transmission that way. So like I said, again, don't think that the problem lies here, the solution lies here. I have to be stuck right here. I can be way back, I could have enough extensions, I can be at the rear axle and get that bolt off. I mean, take a few steps back. Can I look back here? Can I get to it with an extension from way back here? Nine times out of a ten, you can. And it totally just solves the problem and you're all moving on down the road. So, that's wizard tip number one. So. Let's pretend that this vehicle is on the ground. It's already on the lift, so I could have easy access to show you the next tip. Tip number two is you're driving along, your engine dies, and you're just pretty darn sure it's your fuel pump. You turn the key on, not in the engine, you turn the key on, you should hear bzzz. If you have a friend under listen by the fuel tank can say, or even yourself, you could just listen real quick, turn the key on, not the engine on, just the key on, bzzz. Now, if you're not hearing the bzzz noise, your fuel pump may not be working. It may have just died on you. And usually they always die right after a fill-up, all the way full. So your mechanic has to take a fuel tank down full of gas. It always happens that way. There is a trick to get you home. And I usually don't show this trick because it kills my sails on a fuel pump. But I'm going to show it to you guys. You get a rubber mallet, have someone crank the motor, and while they're cranking, this is what you do. That's what you do. The reason why your fuel pump is not running 
is because the commutator has gotten to a bad spot with the brushes and it just stops. If you knock it a few times, it'll spin the stator just enough to spin it back up again and your car will start. And that'll get you home. The part that usually kills the sale for me of putting a new fuel pump is, I don't need to, it works now. It will work until the next time you turn the car off and it lands, the stator lands on the bad spot again. Then you're back to banging on the fuel tank. But that will get you home if you're traveling and your fuel pump goes out. That right there, nine times out of ten, will get you home. If you get it running, do not turn off the vehicle. Just keep going. Fill it, if you've got to fill it with gas, they don't recommend it, but I say keep the vehicle running. It's better than having to bang on it again. Car Wizard, how many times can you get away with doing that? You could probably keep on doing it until you put dents all in your fuel tank, but the reality is if it did it once, it's going to do it again. It's time for a new fuel pump. Every time I've ever done that for someone and all of a sudden, oh, I don't need a fuel pump now, it works. Well, no, it still needs a fuel pump. But that is an emergency procedure. That's not something you want to do on a regular basis. That's an emergency to get you home. So let's move on to tip number three. Here's tip number three. This is actually two different fasteners. But it's the same problem that I run into with new, new, uh, new mechanics in the shop or even a friend, helping a friend out. Frequently stripping out torques, triple squares, and Allen bolts. Today we have a triple square. We just finished a, a Porsche 997 turbo clutch for a customer. And here's some of the old flywheel bolts that are discarded. They're torque to yield bolts. And this is some just old random Allen bolt. I don't know where it came off of. One of the issues is, especially in a clutch environment, the broaching where your tool is going to fit into could be filled with clutch dust, debris, or even if it's an external fastener where it's exposed to the road, it could have dirt, rocks, sand, stuff packed in where the, your tool is going to fit in. So let's take a look at these fasteners. I've got some sand in here. This is obviously not what you're going to find, but I just put a little bit of sand in there to give you an idea. There could be anything. There could be grease. There can be grime. There can be... Look, the, the tool can't reach full depth so that you can properly take the bolt off. And it's frequent, frequently common for an inexperienced mechanic or a young mechanic to just say, oh, it's in there. It's in there. So they put their ratchet on, crank away, and strip out all the teeth on there. And they say, come up to you, hey Dave, I stripped out that thing. I don't know what happened, sorry. Well, this is what you need. You can use compressed air. I'm just going to blow on it myself, but compressed air. <laughs> Clean them out. If you look and see, even from the factory, that's not very deep. There's barely enough there from the factory to even get the bolts off. You have one shot on these to get them off. You better make it count. Now we're at full depth, and I even make sure it's tapped in all the way. Once I'm sure it's clean and I'm at full depth, then I'll get my ratchet or whatever on there and, and break them loose. I rarely, rarely ever strip out a bolt ever since I started practicing that. I learned that from my mentor. Same thing on this Allen bolt. We saw that it's packed full of sand. Get a screwdriver, get that junk out of there, all the way to the full depth. Compressed air or blow on it or whatever you want to do. Hey, car wizard, would brake cleaner be a good choice? Yeah, you can use brake cleaner. Get in there and clean it. That way you can get full depth. And even, like I said, lightly, you don't bang it on there, just lightly tap it. Now you got full contact where you can break the bolt loose and not strip it out. And these triple squares are notorious, especially head bolts, Toyota head bolts, Mercedes head bolts are these triple squares like this. They can be filled with gunk and grime from the engine oil, metallic slime, your tool won't go all the way to full depth. Again, you got to clean those out, get them cleaned out, blow them out with a little bit of a compressed air, 
make sure the, the moral of the story is make sure your tool can get fully seated. So that's tip number three. Tip number four. This tip is O-rings, and this is O-rings in general, any O-rings. It could be a, a cam solenoid for variable valve timing. It could be AC compressor lines. It could be fuel injectors. It could be anything that has O-rings on an engine. This is an old compressor. I think it's off of Tyler's old Porsche or something. It's no good anymore. Or we're not going to use it because it's old. There's an O-ring. Let's pretend we just put a brand new O-ring on, dry. No lubricant, just a dry rubber O-ring. And an inexperienced mechanic or a, or a shade tree mechanic says, yeah, I got a new compressor put on. I'm going to go ahead and put my lines on. And they're like, dang, this thing won't go on there. What the heck's wrong with this thing? And then they make the biggest mistake they can make. I know what I'll do. I'll just put the bolts in there and get my tool and just force it on. There we go, got it. That is the worst thing you can do. That is absolute no-no in the mechanic world. Shame on you if you did that. Any O-ring that you ever put on an engine, if you can't put it on by hand, you've done something wrong. You don't draw O-rings on with the fastener. You put the right O-ring on. I use this X100 silicone lubricant. It's inert. It doesn't react with anything. Always put some sort of a, a grease or a lubricant on your O-rings. And I recommend the silicone because it's like I said, it's inert. So now we've got the O-ring lubricated. Whenever you see whatever it is that you're installing, whether it's a cam solenoid or an injector or whatever it is, you insert until you feel the resistance of the O-ring. At this point, it should never be resistance all the way down to its seats where it's bouncy, like a rubber balloon or something where it's bouncy. It should, you should feel a small pop like this. Did you hear that? That means it properly seated, it properly inserted into the port. Again, we'll go over that again. You should feel some springiness. If you can see there, it's springy. That means the con there's contact with the rubber O-ring into the port. And you lightly push. You don't ever bang, you don't do this. That's not how you put O-rings in. Bad. You put it in there where, where the O-ring seats and then, you hear that? Perfect. When I hear that noise, I know I have perfect seal. I can continue on. I'm ready to move forward. Tip number five is electrical connectors. It could be any electrical connector. It could be the ECM connector. It could be an injector connector, ignition coil connector, cam sensor connector, any connector. Most of these have what's called a weather pack. It's like a rubber little seal inside the connector. And I run up against this with apprentices or friends or family I'm working on. The same problem keeps arising over and over. They pull the connector off. The rubber inside on the weather, weather pack is dry. So let's go over here and look at this. This is an ignition coil on an Acadia. There's a green rubber weather pack. Frequently these get a little bit swollen with age or a little tiny bit of sand or debris or something in there. Make sure you blow it out with air, clean it out. But the, the inexperienced mechanic or the backyard mechanic guy, he gets it in there, it stops, and he's, uh, he's pushing on it and he's trying to get it on and he's, all right, I got it. I, it won't go any further, so it must be seated. I must be as far in as I can go because it won't go anymore. And that is so far from the truth. You start this motor up and it'll have a misfire on that cylinder because it's not seated. Or any other, if the cam sensor's not seated, it'll have a check engine light and run bad, or even if it, if it starts at all. You know, what happened? I got everything seated. No, you didn't. Watch. That's not seated. Oh, sorry. 
Oh man, I didn't realize it wasn't all the way in. Here's the trick. I'm not necessarily promoting the brand, but this is who I use for all my supplies, Crest. Crest Industries. This is silicone spray. Like I said with compressed air, I've already cleaned this one out, but clean all the debris out. Spray it in the connector. You can be liberal. You can get it on the engine. You can, it doesn't matter. It, it evaporates. It goes away and you never even see it again. But you get the lubricant down in the connector. Then you put it on. You hear the click? We didn't hear the click before because we were trying to bang it in with a hammer. Let's try it again. Clean the debris with compressed air. Spray it with some silicone spray. I highly recommend this. I'll show you another tip in a minute and then you hear it click. Now it's seated. And you push the little secure tab on. Done. That's the secret to all electrical connectors that use weather packs. The next tip is any kind of air duct work on an engine like this. It'll look like an accordion. You can play music with it, I guess. No. This is another thing I run up against with mechanics. So they get it on there, and they're over here going, oh, it won't go on, Dave. I don't know what's wrong. I took it off and it came off easy. It's because it's dry rubber. You may not even have the hose clamp undone enough. You might check that, but I use this stuff so much I go through cans of it a month. It makes life so much easier. Obviously, you don't want to spray it on your mass airflow sensor if you're getting into that area, but spray it on the inside of the hose. It's not going to hurt your engine. Hover it over and then just lightly pull it on. Just like that. No hammers, no pry bars. This is the secret to putting all those duct works on without fighting and fighting. They just slide on. Put, hold, tighten down your clamps, you're done. Let's move on to tip number six. This is, some of these are pretty simple, but they're actually very, I've, I've gotten comments, I've showed these before way in the past, and people are like, wow, I never thought of that. So, let's pretend we're putting a valve cover bolt on. It's kind of hard to get to. It's in between behind some harnesses or something, and we're having trouble, and this is theoretically the bolt. So we put the bolt in. We can't get there with our hands because of it's obstructed for whatever reason. So we try to put it in there like this, and it just falls out. I say, well, how the ah, oh, this thing keeps falling. And see, I've already dropped it. I'm gonna get my little magnet and I'll grab it. Here's a magnet we have for sale on Amazon affiliates page as well. The secret to that is a piece of paper. You make it about twice as the diameter of the, the head of the bolt. This is just some random paper I found. Fold it in half. Put it over your socket and push the bolt into there. not coming out. Then you have a nice sturdy solution to your problem. You can put the bolt down in the hole, thread it on, and once it's seated, just wiggle it. You will have a piece of paper left over. Make sure you retrieve the paper, throw it away, and you solved your problem. Here's tip number seven, which we're going to use the same thing. Washers. You have a washer that goes on that bolt. Turn it upside down, the washer falls off. And you don't want your washer falling off if you have the intake open or whatever and falls down into an intake port. Or That's bad, bad business. The tip for that is super glue. It's not sealing anything. It's not imperative. 
to not have super glue. So you put a couple little drops of super glue on, put your washer on, hold it there for 10 or 15 seconds. It's already dried already. There you go. It's not going to fall off unless you hit it with a hammer or something. Put it down in the hole, tighten it up. Again, wiggle and take the paper out. Make sure you get the paper out. Look, the washer's still on there. It won't come off. Once you tighten this down, it probably will break loose the super glue, but you're still going to be able to torque your fastener and it's still going to work just fine. This would also work with the long extensions on tip number one. You can glue the the washer to the bolt and not worry about it falling off. It'll stay there all the way to the hole that it's going into. Let me get this stuff out of the way and we'll show you tip number eight. Here's wizard tip number eight. It does require the purchase of tools. I have these for sale on my Amazon affiliates page, which will be on the link below. But if you purchase this set, you can keep it for many years and it will cut diagnostic time for anyone who wants to check out their car by half or more, maybe even 75%. So your fan's not, let's pretend your cooling fan is electric and it's not coming on. And there's the questions that come up. Is there power to the fan? Is the fuse blown? Is it a bad relay? And you just keep coming up with these questions and you're like, how do I find the answer? These have a switch on them. These take place of the relay that it originally controls the fan or whatever. You take that relay out and you put this in its place, the one that matches the, the pins. It has on and off. I control the on and off now, not the computer, not anything else. This switch does. So I've pulled this, the high-speed relay for this fan out. I pulled it out right here. And I put this tester in its place. With the click of the switch, I can answer five questions at once. So what did we discover by turning that on and hearing the fan run? The fan works. There's power to the fan. The fuse is not blown and there's no cut wires. It's down to two questions. Is the relay bad or is the ECM not controlling it? There's something wrong there. But I just cut a whole slew of questions out of the equation from one switch of a button. I get phone calls all the time. I say, hey, I found out what's wrong with your car. It's ready to go, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, how in the world did you figure that out so fast? By the flick of a switch. It's pretty simple. Here's wizard tip number nine. Your power window. Let's say that window over there is not working. You go to roll the window down and nothing happens. There's a real quick fix that you can do. We're not gonna see it too well on these dome lights because these windows work just fine. They're not pulling that huge of a load. But you again get those questions. Is the power window motor bad? Is the wiring bad? Is the... All you have to do is turn on your dome lights, try to roll down the window. If it doesn't move, but you can see your dome lights dim just a little bit, every time you push the button, dim, 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 they dim a little bit. That means there is power to the motor, there isn't a blown fuse, and it probably would work if the motor wasn't seized up or something's wrong in there. It's, pull, it's pulling so much power to dim the lights because the motor's probably locked up or seized up or something. So people always come in and real quick, well, I think my power window motor's out. I'll do the quick little test. I'll do the power windows. I watch the, the lights dim and I know you need a new window regulator. They're like, well, how do you know that? That's just a trick that I've been using for years and it's, it has yet to be wrong. The last wizard tip I have is pretty common. It's pretty common sense, I guess you could say. If you're in a bind and you just don't understand what's going on, just like you're watching this video here, you can go on Google or YouTube and type in the search and specifically type in the issue that you're having. 
very likely you could pull up a video just like this video is running right now and there's the answers to some of your issues. So that's wizard tip number 10. Check Google, check YouTube, look around and see online what you can find on the information. I do that myself in the shop. I get in a bind and it's, it's a vehicle I'm not familiar with and I'm like, what's the common quick fix here? And I Google it, boom, back in business. I already found the answer. I do that myself, so there's no reason why you guys couldn't do that. So that's the 10 wizard tips I'm going to share with you guys. I hope it saves you some time, maybe saves you some frustrations. Uh, I, over the years, I, I use these tips, and people that are watching me, friends and family, they're just amazed. They're like, wow, I never thought of that. So maybe you guys can use them in your own line of work or hobbies or whatnot. Just like I showed you guys some tools I had for sale, they're on the Amazon Affiliates page. I have a lot of tools for sale there. If you haven't already, click the subscribe button. There's many more cool videos to come in 4K. Again, thanks for watching, and I look forward to more videos with you guys.